Hello everyone and welcome to this Aim High Live. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, this one is about why do beavers have so many eyelids? Um, so this one is a, is a science one, because uh, I do the science ones. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks so much for coming. If this is your first time, then you can ask questions whenever you want um, and steer the direction that this takes. This is going to be a very beaver-based live um, but if you've got other questions that turn out to be interesting things just go for it and we'll, we'll see where it goes anyway um hi everyone who's here i'm just gonna say hi to people who are here so japan maple's here one million sloths is here leonardo's here get out of the freezers here angel is here rebecca's here age of jess is here posy joe hi everyone i'm gonna stop stop reading names um but uh yeah thanks all for coming uh so yeah today this one is about um why do beavers have so many eyelids. Uh, so, but but first, what's this? Uh, what do people think this is? And this is this uh, photograph from space. Um, what is this? What do you guys think? Um, and again, yeah, if this is your first time, do ask questions whenever you want. If you're watching on Facebook, then you won't be able to see uh, most of the comments that people are making. So, so head over to this website in order to, to get the mainstream like everyone else. Um, and also, what was I gonna, oh, I've written it here. Um, I always tell people, I always tell people this at the end, um, but do let us know if there are any topics that you want us to cover in science or philosophy or geography or, or English or whatever. Um, let us know, like send, send messages in socials. Um, and also send us messages, particularly if you want to ask Jane Goodall any specific questions, she's coming up tomorrow, or Cal Major, who's the girl who paddleboarded the entire length of the coast of the UK um, to campaigning about, about plastic pollution and, and advocating for better looking after the ocean. Anyway, send any questions that you might want to ask people like her in to our, to our socials um, and we will try and get them asked for you as well. And if you haven't followed socials already, you can find them all at, at Aim High Live. Um, anyway, right, okay, let's talk about beavers and their eyelids and so on. Um, so yeah, why do beavers have so many eyelids? Um, but first, what, what is this? So uh, one, million sloths, one million sloths are saying dust. Venable Sugar saying a pond. Rebecca Garman saying is it a rainforest? Or Leonardo saying is it a sinkhole? Sinkholes are fascinating, aren't they? I don't know if, if, if anyone hasn't seen pictures of sinkholes on Google, then at some stage, or Ecosia actually, I use Ecosia to search. If you haven't heard of Ecosia, it's, the, it's, the, it's like Google. Um, it's slightly less good than Google, but as you use it, they take all of the money um, that they're raising from advertising, and instead of using it to just make themselves rich, they use it to plant trees. Um, so yeah, check out Ecosia if you haven't already. It's, it's such a good search engine. Um, although sometimes I do have to use Google because it isn't quite as good as Google sometimes, but it's my main one. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, Ecosia sinkholes after this live, uh, which are these huge holes that appear in the ground and they're very scary. Like it would just be a huge circular area of ground that would just plummet downwards. And, and this happens for various reasons, but one of the reasons is to do with kind of ongoing erosion where you get puddles of slightly acidic rain or something like that that builds up and eats away a, a soft rock underneath like a limestone or something and and you get this huge cave underneath this area of ground that seems perfectly stable uh, but the area of but it but the cave kind of forms upwards and so the ground gets thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually it just collapses and collapses inwards and it's, it's quite mad seeing these sinkholes appear around the world where you've just got like an entire town and then like a, a, a part of the town just sinks down and kind of disappears into this into this abyss that you can barely see the bottom of. Anyway, sinkholes. Um, no, so people guess sinkholes and no, it's not that. Someone guessed the moon. Um, it's not that. Um, there's a lot of sinkhole guessing, actually. Or was it Leonardo just constantly saying sinkhole? It was. Um, Venable Sugar is saying pond. Um, and Leonardo is saying, I am here. Uh, and Angel is saying, if you slide this banner, it also says cheer now to be in a war. Angel, I don't know what the banner is, but anyway, I've asked the other guys to try and get rid of it because it doesn't sound cool. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll try to get rid of it. Um, right, okay, so uh, let's see. I think someone actually guessed what it was. Uh, Mears is saying, is it a beaver eyelid? Um, and Japan Mabel said it. Yeah, it's a beaver dam. Right, this 
is the biggest known beaver dam. It is so big that you can see it from space. And the beaver dam runs all the way across like this. Um, and the water flows in this direction towards the beaver dam. Um, and so, so yeah, the water level is up here. And then, and then the beavers build their, uh, well, actually I'll go to that in a moment. First, before I talk about that, does anyone know why? Like, why, why do beavers build these dams? What, what reason could they have to build these huge structures? Does it not seem, yeah, like, what, why? Why do beavers build dams? What do you guys think? And there are a couple of key reasons why they build them. So Rebecca Carmen saying, is it to trap fish and build a habitat? And that's great, that's a great suggestion, yeah. So security of food is one of the key things. So by building up a pond, they create an ecosystem. They create their own little ecosystem that is trapping food for them. Um, sorry, I should label that this is a beaver dam. The biggest ever, well, the biggest known ever. Um, Although back in the day when there were way more other giant mammals before humans basically drove them all to extinction. I wonder if there were like massive versions of beavers that built even bigger dams. I bet there were. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, reasons why are food security. So trapping, trapping uh, fish and things like that. Um, and the other one, I'm not sure if the other one said, if anyone said the other main reason. Japan Maple saying there's some busy beavers. Yeah, 100%. Um, so to control the water level and for their homes, yes. Um, part of the dam is their den. One million sloths is saying a lot of squids. Um, there's no squids up here. Um, and uh, Uncle Bill Drone is saying defending the young. Yeah, okay, so this is, so it's a lot to do with safety. Um, it's, about, it's about safety from, from predators. Now, I, won I wonder if this is something that, like, I I did. Not, I was not taught anything about beavers at school at all, and I wonder if maybe if you're in in the states, then then you're taught a lot more about beavers as you grow up. But to me, all of this beaver-based stuff is mind blowing because I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, over here in the UK, we just have otters, and otters are really cute, but they don't really do anything constructive like building a massive dam. Um, anyway, yeah. So people are saying beavers are so cool, and you are right. They are really cool. Right. What do you think these are? What's that? Number one. And what's this? Number two. And actually there are a few of them. A few of these little things, uh, these little dark patches. What do you guys think think they are? Sam Maple's saying they build dams for hydroelectric power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they've got, number two is the turbine hall, um, where they run the water through the turbines. And uh, number one is the tea break room where the beavers go and they've, we're finished working on the hydroelectric power. Uh, Leonardo's saying, is it a cave? Um, and Angel is saying, I briefly remember learning about beavers in primary school in the US. Okay, so at least they taught you a bit about beavers um, in, in the US, in primary school. Um, uh, Leonardo's saying, are they the real sinkholes? Um, and post saying, bath time for the beavers. No, th so these are called the beaver lodges. Right, so I'm going to show you a picture of a, of a smaller beaver lodge um, down here. So yeah, this is, this is a beaver lodge. Um, so how do you get into a beaver lodge? And many of you may already know this, but if you don't, it's kind of cool. Um, what is the, what's, the, how do you, what's the entrance way to a beaver lodge? If you were trying to get in, what would you need to do? Loge, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, they're architectural goddesses. Yes, they are. Um, so Leonardo's saying you have to sneak in. Um, and Angel is saying underwater, uh, so Rebecca, and so is Math, oh, who are you? Ma, oh, Ma Toronto. Um, yes, so underwater is the way. Right, so if you want to get into a beaver dam, then you've got to go underwater because the entrance, oh, wait, that's the bad color to use. Let's use this color instead. Because um, the entrance is underwater. And so inside the beaver dam will be this kind of safe place. Um, for beavers to hang out and raise their young and so on. And this provides them with protection from like wolves and bears and stuff like that. Um, now, usually these things are about kind of half a meter down. Um, can anyone think why 
so yeah 0.5 of a meter or a bit more um, to get down to the entrance um, why, why do they need to build them so deep why is it not enough to just have them like 10 centimeters down a couple of reasons why why you'd want to build your entrance to your beaver lodge so deep uh, why so deep um, yeah why would they build them so deep because they're 14 and this is deep. Um, to avoid uh, to avoid predators so the water doesn't flood the hut. Yeah, so the water doesn't flood the hut makes... Um, well, the water not flooding the hut is to do with making sure it's high enough. Um, and so Uncle Bill is saying drought. Yeah, um, so if, if, you get, if you get a drought, then the water level will drop and that could expose the entrance which could make the beavers really vulnerable to predators. So they build it far enough down in case the water runs out. So drought is one of the reasons in case they're running out, but there's actually another reason uh, why they'd want it this deep. Um, and that is rather than thinking of it being very hot, think of the opposite kind of season. What, what other opposite season might cause the problems for beavers and their, the entrance to their, their lodges where they live? Um, and while I'm waiting for that to come in, if you are joining late, this is the Name High Live. This is uh, the live free online school, so you can ask questions whenever you want. We are running um, lives about all kinds of things from, uh, in we're doing English, philosophy, um, history. In fact, this is while questions coming in, I'm just going to quickly show you what's, what's coming up next. Um, so this is what's coming up after my one. Uh, how do we treat cancer? Um, so Hannah Bolland, who's, who's studying cancer at the University of Oxford, is going to carry on with her course about about cancer, what it is and how we treat it. Um, the one next week she's doing is so cool. The, it will lead on from this one, but she's doing one about how you use bubbles to, to treat cancer. Um, and then tomorrow, Nish is gonna do how to recognize your racial bias. Um, Josh is gonna do one on biology. And then we've got the amazing Dr. Jane Goodall who's coming on. And then we're gonna do, me and Nish are gonna do an aim high duo on who's responsible for climate change together. Um, and then Hannah's doing Will Brexit and the EU and I'm going to do Is My Green Your Green Part 1 because I feel like that's going to take such a long time to unravel. Um, anyway, that's what's coming up. Right, okay, so what's the other reason other than drought? Um, ooh, Angel is coming straight with the right answer. Yes, it's, it's ice. So it's so that it's below the level of ice because um, water is very, very strange in that it... Um, in the way that its ice behaves. Why is, why is ice so weird um, when you think about it in terms of like a solid or a liquid? And I'm gonna quickly just draw you. So these are the kind of like particle diagrams you'd often see at school, right? And this would be a solid. Solid has all the particles bunched together. Um, and if you haven't got to this in school yet, I think you do, you normally cover this quite early, but if you haven't, basically we're looking at the particles inside different materials. So the particles that solid is made from are all bunched together. The particles that a liquid is made from are kind of close to one another, but like sliding over one another. It's so like slip is sliding around, um, and that would be a liquid. Um, and then gas particles are really far apart. But what's unusual about ice and water? It's, it's something very, very strange going on. Here are your gas particles all far apart. Okay, so Angel's saying ice floats. It's a solid less dense than a liquid, which is rare. It's the, and Oliver's saying a similar thing. Brilliant that it's a solid that floats on top of the, on top of the water. So look, in these diagrams, you see the um, solids look like all the particles are closer together and liquids look like they're slightly more spread out. And that's true for almost all solids and liquids, except for water. Water actually is at its most compressed when it's a liquid. So when it becomes a solid, the particles are more spread out and actually held apart by these bonds that hold them. Well, I say bonds, they're like intermolecular forces, but anyway, we're not going into that now. Um, but they're held apart by these forces that hold them further apart. And that means that water is this kind of weird miracle of a material where the solid forms on the surface instead of at the bottom. Um, and so if you're a beaver, you need to take this into account because the ice is gonna form on the surface. So it might form down to this depth, for example. And as long as you can swim underneath the ice, then you can still get into your, into your den. Um, I don't know if I've talked about ice before, but just let me just switch. Um, so let me just switch, switch over to here and just talk about how important, how amazing ice is. I remember my dad used to go on about this when I was younger, um, and about how you know if ice were heavier than water, were more dense than water, and it did sink like most materials, 
then every time there was an ice age, the oceans would have frozen and the, and the ice would have fallen to the bottom and they would have frozen all the way from the bottom all the way to the top, frozen completely solid and killed all the life that was trying to evolve there, or at least most of it. Whereas instead, all the ice forms at the top making an insulating layer that keeps the oceans actually quite warm underneath. Uh, and so the fact that, um, the fact that ice is less dense than water and floats on the top is absolutely crucial for the, for the evolution of life because it's meant that, it's meant that the, the bottom of the oceans has always been protected even during an ice age. And that's one of the main reasons that we look for water on other planets when we're looking for life is because it's a material that, that allows this constant kind of, uh, it, it creates its own insulating layer at the top. Um, you, you might think that the, that the underneath the sea ice in the Arctic, it might be really, really cold, but it's actually, it's really not too bad when you're, when you're deep underneath the ice. Um, and certainly during an ice age, it's better than being on the surface. Anyway, right, I'm going to stop going on and on about ice um, and go back to beavers. So, yeah, so beavers build their dams about 0.5 meters deep because then if there's a drought, then they're not exposed to, um, well, actually 0.5 meters minimum. They can go down to like a meter or even more sometimes. Um, but yeah, so to avoid their entrance being exposed during a drought, but also make it possible to get in when it's, when it's icy. Um, right, okay, so what materials, let's go back to this massive beaver dam that you can see from space. What materials do beavers use to make these dams. What do you guys think? And I'll just have one more welcome to anyone joining late because I can see that a few people have, have joined late. Um, this is an Aim High Live so you can ask questions whenever you want. We're doing why do beavers have so many eyelids? Although we've actually been talking quite a lot about just beaver dams because they're so cool um, and I'm going to talk about eyelids in a second. Um, Okay, so what do beavers make their dams from? So Rebecca Carmen saying sticks and mud, wood, logs. Yes. Okay, cool. So, um, <laughs> get out of the freezer has decided to become a beaver. No one can stop me now. <laughs> um, great. No, go for it. I'm, I'm all behind it. Um, oh, Uncle Bill is talking about how terrestrial pressures, uh, like, uh, on Earth, uh, this is the, this the situation with water and ice, but also in different environments where there are different pressures, you get different kinds of ice, which is completely true. I was looking at the diagram of all the different kinds of ice about two days ago, and there is so many of them. There's so many different kinds of ice. In fact, I made the video that I made about soil, um, if you haven't seen it, it's called Disappearing Ground, and you can see it on my YouTube if you just search my name, um, or Science in the Bath. Uh, anyway, that talks about one of the ice one of the forms of ice that they've that's recently been found trapped inside a diamond. Anyway, right, so um, let's go over to this beaver carrying over some sticks. So yeah, this is a this is a beaver carrying some sticks. Now they carry sticks in their mouths, but they actually um, carry. How do you think the beavers carry muds, mud, and stones um, if they have forgotten their handy um, their handy backpack? If they've left their backpack back at the the beaver lodge, um, then how? How do they uh, carry um, mud and stones? Uh, and yeah, that's right. Yeah, they carry it in their top hat. Um, they've got secret compartments sewn in. <laughs> I actually used to have a uh, like a green top hat, and I sewed in a little compartment where I could keep like cakes and stuff in the top. I thought it was a really good idea, but actually, it was just really heavy. That's <laughs> a real problem. Uh, do they, so they don't eat the mud and regurgitate it? No, all oh, that's a good idea. Um, he's on a nature hike. Uh, Cynic Mist is saying, is it in their fur? They don't carry it in their fur, um, nor do they use their tail. Um, uh, Miz is saying, can you pat a beaver? What would you do if it tried? I, I think beavers are probably, you know, they've got their own thing going on. I think if you tried to hang out with them, they'd probably be like, you know, chill out. We're, we we've got our own community here. Although you never know. I was I was thinking this as I was I was kind of um I was just kind of looking looking into like getting these beaver pictures. Um I was thinking about how, how little is actually known about beavers and how little is known about so many animals. And I'm sure if a human like get out of the freezer did actually try and go and live with beavers, then eventually you would be able to gain the trust of a group of beavers if you gave it enough time. Um, it would take many months and eventually you'd be able to live with them and kind of learn, learn more about their ways, I'm sure. And I'm sure they all have personalities and emotions and different levels of creativity and, and it would be an amazing like 
piece of research to go and to go and live with beavers. Um, I'm, one of the main reasons I'm thinking this is because Jane Goodall, um, who's coming on tomorrow, basically did the same thing with chimpanzees. She just went to go and live with them um, at a time when it had never been done before, and and just just stuck it out for months until they finally started accepting her. Anyway, you'll hear more about that tomorrow. It's such a good story. Right, okay, back to beavers. So yes, they carry the mud and the rocks in their hands, um, in their little hands. They carry it to the, to, the, to the place where they're building the dam. And to build these dams, they basically like drive these, drive sticks into the riverbed to begin with. Amazing the fact that they construct this. They do this all at night as well. So they do most of this building at night and they drive sticks into the riverbed and then they start filling in the gaps with, with smaller sticks and mud and rocks and things. And it's crazy that they managed to build these huge things. Now, something interesting is going on here. You've got a bit of straight beaver dam. Oh, wrong line. You've got a bit of straight beaver dam here and you've got a bit of curved beaver dam here. Why would there be a curvy bit and why would there be a straight bit? What do you guys think? Uh, Angel is saying, how do they hold them and walk? And I don't actually know. I haven't spent enough time hanging out with beavers, clearly, um, but they do. Uh, someone asked if they carry it in their cheeks. That'd be so, so, so good if they could. Um, trap fish in the curvy bit. So yeah, there's this idea of, we talked about this a bit at the beginning, about beavers being what's called a keystone species. So a keystone, well, if you're looking at like a bridge, um, then a bridge is like, can be made of like multiple bits of rock and then eventually you get to the middle one that's that kind of shape and then they all kind of continue like that and this this middle piece of rock is called the keystone in a bridge um because it's the it's the stone that keeps the whole bridge together and without this if you just pulled this stone out the whole bridge would just fall out and so a keystone is often used as a word for like you know the thing that everything else depends on so beavers are called a keystone species because they build a whole habitat they build a whole place that can be a nursery for for salmon and for trout where you know these these little fish can be can be um, can be born in the first place and, and grow up. Um, I say born, born silly fish. I mean hatch. Um, anyway, yeah. So they these curvy ones form a nice nursery for for these kind of species and also give the beavers a food supply. But also it's just to do with river speed. Um, the they build straight bits of dam when the river's going quite slowly, and they build curvy ones when the river's going really fast because the curve is much better at withstanding the, um, the extra force, just in the same way that a curvy bridge is much better than a flat bridge um, if it has to withstand a lot of force. Anyway, um, these, these dams, yeah, amazing things. The fact that they're like one, um, yeah, they get, well, uh, no, they're like one meter across and they go about two meters deep and anyway, pretty cool. Right, okay, now let's move along to uh, beaver eyelids. Um, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, this is not the eyelid of a beaver. Um, this is the eyelid of a crane bird because I couldn't find the eyelid of a beaver uh, for some reason. Uh, I was looking around quite a lot, but I was struggling to find some good, good photographs. Um, but anyway, this is one for a crane bird um, and it's got a, uh, the name for this eyelid is, it's got like a complicated biology name, which I'll write down for you, I wrote it down here. Um, and I, I'm not even going to begin to pretend that I know how to say this word correctly. Nictitating or whatever. Uh, anyway, some kind of, just like a fancy word for, for a see-through eyelid. So, um, yeah, beavers have see-through eyelids just like this one that, that are beneath their kind of primary, the main eyelid, like the eyelids we have. Um, and why do they have them? Why do beavers have these, have these uh, see-through eyelids? What are they for? Uh, Rebecca Carmen saying that looks painful. No, no, it's not painful at all. This is this is just the um, this is just the the semi-transparent eyelid that falls over the top. The the bits that you can see here are blood vessels that are just there to to supply the eyelid with um, with with nutrients so that it can stay alive. Um, so Uncle Bill Druin is saying better vision underwater. Exactly. So they're basically like goggles. Um, to prevent water getting into the eyes, just like goggles. Leonardo's saying that it looks like something out of a horror movie. Um, 
and to see when they're sleeping, says Rebecca Carmen. Um, and isn't there a frog species with things like that? There are loads of other animals with, with eyelids like this, yeah. So birds and, and amphibians and so on. Um, and beavers have managed to keep this, which is brilliant for them because it means that they have a really nice set of goggles for seeing underwater, um, which is such a cool uh, innovation. I, um, I've been really impressed with beavers. I think they've put in a good showing. Uh, and I think that they're just, the amount of amazing things that you can learn by just picking just any random animal and just going on the internet and just trying to find out more about them is, is unbelievable. Like there is, there's so much interesting stuff in nature. But the other thing that is almost, almost as mind blowing is that once you, once you see, I'm just going to go back to the, the picture of the, the dam that, that you can see from space. Um, one of the things that is, is, is equally as mind-blowing as, as a lot of the stuff that you can learn about nature and how incredible it is, is how much we just don't know. We just don't know most of the things about nature. And this is one of the things that kind of campaigners are, are constantly trying to get at who are trying to protect nature and protect, protect our environment is that all of the destruction of the rainforest and, and bogs and, and, and oceans and all kinds of things around the world is destroying so much amazing knowledge and information and stuff we just haven't learnt yet, um, and and it's 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 very it's very baffling to see how much we don't know. So uh, if you want to learn more, go and learn more. And if you want to find out more, then try and find out more because beavers is a great example of something we actually barely know anything about. If you go on the Wikipedia page, almost every single thing that's said, you'll see citation needed, which means that there's, they haven't been able to find an academic paper that, that, reli that I say reliably, but, but like an institution that said, yeah, yeah, this is a good piece of research because so much is still yet to be done on beavers as with many, many living things. Um, Anyway, right. I am. Um, uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna wrap up now, and I'll, I'll ask. I'll take some questions as well, if there are any in the chat. But um, I'll just put pop up here the lives that are coming up over the next few days, um, so that you can see. Uh, yeah, this is what's this is what's coming up over the next kind of two or three days. So do come along to those if you haven't already. Do follow Aim High Live uh, on our socials and sign up on the website for the. Um, for the like the mailing list if you haven't already so that you get our get our weekly sketch. Um and uh yeah do do share aim high share aim high with your friends and also do suggest topics to us as well. Um because it's always fun to have ideas coming in from you guys about what you'd like us to cover. And we do try try to get to those, although I feel like there's one on batteries that someone's been asking me to do for ages, which I will eventually get to. <laughs> I haven't got to yet. Someone else someone asked us for something about nanoparticles, that's on my list too. Anyway, we'll get there. But um thanks so much for coming. Uh I will see you guys tomorrow for the live with Jane Goodall. Do tell your friends about it and spread the word um and yeah i will now just look at questions but uh thanks all okay leonardo's saying we do not know a thing about the deep sea yeah you're right like the this did the sea i was speaking to um to marianne who's someone else on the aim high team about this this morning we need better publicity for the sea the sea needs a much better publicity campaign um uh what else people said So Steph is saying that um, that they have the beavers have iron in their teeth as they need to be strong to fell trees. I didn't know that. Um, I don't. I didn't know that. Um, I know that they have like high high calcium in their in their teeth, but I didn't. I didn't. I don't know about iron. Um, but certainly they need incredibly strong teeth. They can they can cut through a tree about that big in one single bite, and they can get through like the trunk of an aspen. Um, like a, de a decent trunk in about 20 minutes. So yeah, they have incredibly strong teeth, beavers. Um, <laughs> Japan Maple saying, buy some billboards advertising the ocean. Yes, the ocean, <laughs> have you heard of it? It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, get out of the freezer. You could be, you, you, and, you and Japan Maple um, can be in charge of, uh, of what the board says. That would be great, thanks. Um, what else have people said? Uh, uh, it's gonna hurt kind of freeze is talking about me giving my seal of approval to beavers. Beavers are great. Um, beavers are 17 out of 19. Good ranking. Nice. Um, and things are alive in the ocean. <laughs> Go have a look. 
we do need to get so much better at protecting the ocean. Um, anyway, right, okay, I think I've answered all the questions. Sorry if I've missed one. Um, but uh, yeah, I will see you guys all tomorrow for the Jane Goodall Live at 3.30 and then for my Aim High Duo at 4.30 afterwards. And then for Is My Green Your Green on Thursday. All right, thanks all. See you soon. Farewell. Bye.